Hi, Coveters. Hope you're all doing well. Chelsea here from the Covet Fashion team. I'm back for another Behind the Brand interview today with a very special guest. Now, today's guest is not only the designer of new Covet brand, Conrado, but also one of our Threading Change grant recipients. So please give a warm welcome to Angela. Thanks for having me, Chelsea. I'm really excited to be here. Yay! Well, we're excited to have you. Um, well, before I get into all of the all the questions that we have, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your brand, Conrado, for those who may not be um, as familiar? Yeah. So um, I'm Angela Season, and I own the clothing brand, Conrado Clothing. Um, we are dedicated to using only dead stock fabric and materials, and we design women's wear clothing that's inspired by living from the city to the beach. Oh my gosh, city to the beach. I'm already like so ready to <laughs> be transported to a beach right now as I wear my sweater. Um, <laughs> um, as we were kind of getting to know you and, and um, on the Covet fashion team, I, I noticed that you have quite the background in fashion. Um, I, I kind of just want to know, like, have you always wanted to start your brand or is that something that has kind of evolved um, from just experience? Um, would love to hear your, your background on that. Yeah, so um, I think I can say that I'm really lucky because I actually grew up in the fashion industry. So my mom started a garment workshop in the Philippines about 40 years ago. Wow. So the very first time that I learned how to sew, I think I was probably five. Oh my um, gosh. <laughs> I would spend after school at my mom's workshop um, with her team of um, sewers who actually still make my clothing today. So they still make um, Conrado clothing today. So wow. I really have a special connection with them. Um, and yeah, so I, growing up, I really knew that I wanted to be in fashion. Um, all like in high school, I was always joining like the fashion um, club or like every time they need a fashion designer for school, I'm always raising my hands up. Um, and in college, of course, I went into fashion school. And after that, I worked in several um, brands from corporate to runway. Um, I worked in California, New York, and even Paris. So I really have a good background in fashion from retail to design to even merchandising. Wow, that's incredible. I think that's so cool. I, I mean, I feel like I could talk about that just that piece that you just said but that's um, incredible that you grew up in that kind of field and then the the people that your mom had worked with previously are now still a part of this Conrado family I think that that is so incredible and I think very unique um because I don't think a lot of brands mm -hmm. could even say that at all um yeah, so that's exactly. amazing thank you that's so yeah. awesome um, also, I, I feel like Conrado is such a unique name. Um, does there, is there some meaning behind that? Um, okay. or how did you come up with that name? So when I was, um, probably six months into starting my, this brand, I had no name for it at all. I was struggling to put a name to it. Um, my name, Angela is pretty common. So I didn't want to name it after Angela. Um, and actually also my last name is pretty common in the Philippines. So I didn't want to name it after that too. Um, so growing up in the Philippines, actually, my grandfather, whose name is, for whose first name is Conrado, um, lived with us. Um, and I was very close to my grandpa. Like after school, I would just hang out with him and we would just talk and chat all the time. We would look at Aww. all his old photographs. Um, so when the, just one random night, I think it was after like three nights of just like making new patterns, designing just nonstop, um, I had a dream. Like we were back in his room. Um, we were just chatting and I said, Grandpa, look at what I made. And basically the tag that I have, which is an upside down triangle with the name Conrado, that was what I handed to him and say, look at what I made. And I woke up and I said, that's the name of my brand. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is amazing. I love that story. Um, 
I always have chills every time I say it. <laughs> it gave me chills. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, like that's so incredible. I I think that that also, like there's so many moments I think that are so exciting. Like the history with your mom and kind of growing up in the fashion industry. And then you have this tie with your grandpa and the name and that, that I think that's so, it's almost like you were meant to kind of do all of this, like it all kind of came together. And then now you have this like amazing brand and company and, and pieces that are you're producing. I, I think that that is awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I really feel that way every time, like, um, my company has, um, just did something really good, or we had a day of good sales. Um, I really feel thankful that I feel like my grandpa's with there with me and my, my mom, of course, is always there supporting. Yeah. Me. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that story. Um, kind of going back originally to how you, um, introduced your brand, you mentioned that you guys, um, were dedicated to only using dead stock materials. I feel like that is also a very unique piece that not a lot of other, um, fashion brands can kind of speak to. Why is repurposing and sustainability so important to you and your brand? Um, definitely, um, it is important for me because working in different, um, departments in the fashion industry, Um, especially when I worked in a corporate environment, I really saw the amount of products that we were making and how much waste there is. Um, Just from sampling, um, just just every season, what I see we produce is a lot. And coming, growing up in my mom's workshop in the Philippines, we had orders from bigger companies actually from the US. um, And there would always be excess fabric that my mom would always encourage me to like, oh, use this, make something for your friends. Um, So it was kind of second nature to me. Mm -hmm. And also starting out as a small brand, um, I know a lot of designers feel this way. We cannot like um, achieve the minimums that other factories ask of us. Yeah. Um, So that's something that I really wanted to dedicate my brand um, so using dead stock fabric and materials, because there is a lot of these materials. Um, honestly, when I source my fabric, um, I go to warehouses, probably the size of football fields, just mm-hmm. filled with fabric. And that, that that is all waste that factories wow. no longer need. Wow. Yeah, that is one thing that I think like all of us, which is really exciting. Um, to kind of see the progression of newer brands coming like Conrado, you know, we just also had El Rali, who is another threading change um, grant recipient. And it's really exciting to see kind of this change in the industry where, um, you know, it's important, you know, you can't turn a blind eye. And I think that's also one of the perks of growing up maybe in the fashion industry is that it wasn't something new that you found out about. It was a a part of kind of your progress or your progression to, um, you know, basically establishing Conrado as it is today. Um, But I think that's really important for, you know, maybe some up and coming fashion designers or people who are, you know, looking to do a more sustainable kind of shopping, if you will. I think it's important to kind of recognize that um, there is alternatives and there's a lot of other brands that like Conrado that are doing incredible things and trying to repurpose and give new life to things that are just sitting, unfortunately, in a in a warehouse somewhere. So um, kind of building off of the dead stock materials and repurposing, I'd love to hear like, where do you get your inspiration from when designing new pieces? Yeah. Um, so before COVID, definitely... <laughs> Um, I traveled a lot because I am based here in um, the United States and um, I grew up in the Philippines and the workshop is in the Philippines. So traveling back and forth um, and stopping by different cities. So traveling was always a big part of my inspiration. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, what I've noticed the past few years is that I tend to get inspired from my friends, even like their friends, just their like strong women who are artists, who have their own businesses, who 
um, run their own company, like they are very inspiring. They, women are very powerful. Mm -hmm. Um, and we really run the world. So (laughs) so that's why. (laughs) (laughs) So I really get inspired from people, people watching, traveling and being, um, alongside other artists and friends who are, who I think are inspirational and powerful. Yeah. I love that. I think that it's so important to, um, not only just kind of absorb inspiration from other places. Like I, I love the idea of traveling. And especially when you said like ocean, um, I was already feeling those kind of like scenic, you know, very, uh, uh, beachy vibes, but also I think that it's incredible to just look around you. And like you said, I think like there's so much inspiration to be found, whether it's your friends, your friends, friends, just powerful women, iconic figures. Um, I know for us on the Covet fashion team, like we have a lot, we're very grateful, um, being in the tech space of having a lot of women who are in um, you know, positions of power. And I think that's always inspiring, whether you're in a creative field or just, you know, um, on, in the gaming side, like myself, um, it's really awesome to be like, she is kicking ass. Like, I love what she's doing. She's just a powerful woman. And I want to kind of take that on and also be a powerful, you know, person. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's always so inspiring. So that's really cool to hear as well. Um, so speaking of covet fashion, um, we just launched Conrado in game this week. Can you speak to what you are most excited about with working with covet fashion? So I'm really excited about, um, definitely seeing my clothing digitized in an app. Um, I think that's a very exciting to see it in a different form Mm -hmm. and also like I can't wait to see how people style my clothing within the app. Um, I think those are what I'm very excited about. Yay! (laughs) Um, Well, I personally can't wait to style with your pieces in game. I think the community is going to love them. Um, And kind of speaking of excitement, can you tell us what it means to be a recipient of the Covet Fashion Threading Change Grant Initiative? Oh my gosh, um, I really am super proud and super thankful um, to have received the grant. Um, Within this year, I actually was able to um, move my studio into a bigger spot where I could have um, a little retail space. Um, So for this coming season, um, I'm actually opening up my doors um, um, five days a week now for anyone who wants to walk in. Um, and to shop my clothing. So that's really one of my dreams that the grant has really helped with. And then another um, thing that I was able to use the grant for is to be able to hire help. Um, So I have been a one woman team for four years now. And this year I was able to um, hire someone to help me out. So thank you so much, Kavet. Oh my gosh. Congrats. (laughs) That's incredible. I mean, I think that it was incredible to see how much success you have already had just as a one woman show. I think like you really deserve all of the praise. And this is exactly why, you know, people like yourself, brands like Conrado that we want to give back to. Um, And that's incredible that you have a retail space, you have help now, um, and who knows like what's next. Um, I think that that is so exciting. Um, I think also too, one of the things that I love about your story is just kind of, you had a background in the fashion industry. You previously had worked, um, you know, for other in fa- fashion brands on the merchandising side, you got the whole full kind of experience. Um, do you have any advice for someone who is looking to take a leap and go full time, whether it's in the fashion industry or just pursuing their dreams? I mean, I think that that is a testament, um, to yourself of just being able to take that leap, but what advice would you give for someone who's maybe kind of contemplating? Um, definitely, I feel that anyone who wants to pursue whatever they dream of, um, I believe that you should really um, and, um, 
put yourself in places where you can meet people in that industry. Even if you're, if you want to be an artist, um, go to someone who already paints or is a photographer, maybe give them like a little email or give them a little call or go to their gallery um, and say like, I'm really interested in your work. Um, and I really want to learn more. And knocking on people's door is some something that I did when I was really young. I just kind of went for it and I didn't stop. So that's something that um, I is my advice for anyone who wants to start is knock on people's door. Don't be shy. Um, yes. Be confident <laughs> about it. <laughs> Yes, you heard it from Angela. She is a, a shining example. I think networking is such a huge part and just owning it. Like you said, like be confident in your interest in your um, desire to enter into a field, whether it's a creative one or not, whatever it is. I think just having those conversations is really important. You kind of touched on this a little bit earlier with kind of um threading change and how that has really um, impacted your business in a positive way. But what's kind of planned for Conrado? What can people um, look out for in 2021 for you? So definitely um, we are doing a lot more pre-orders for this year. So um, it actually helps us um, decide how much to make um, uh, in ahead of time before producing too much. So it helps us actually produce better. So we are doing a lot more, um, I would call them drops. Um, mm -hmm. So about two times um, every season, we will have drops. Um, we just finished one last, um, um, like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, and then, then we will have another one next month. Um, and also the next big thing about Conrado for 2021 is that we are turning five years old, which is next month. Woo Congrats. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> I can't believe it. I know. I'm sure time has just flown by for you yeah. and it's probably just like, wait, I just got started. What do you mean five years? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Well, congratulations on that. I think that um, Conrado is such a special brand. I think that you have been incredibly amazing to talk to. And I've been so excited to hear your story throughout Threading Change. And just, I am so thrilled that you are now um, in covet fashion. Um, for those that are watching, where can they um, learn more about Conrado or where can they stay up to date? What, where's the best place to, to, to follow? So we have a website, which is shopconrado.com. And we usually update our Instagram every day, um, which is at Shop Conrado. So there, those are the two places that you can find me. Awesome. Well, you heard it here, folks. Go follow um, Conrado. And Angela, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today and letting Covet, um, our Covet community get to know you better. Um, we're so thrilled that you're a part of our Covet family. Thank you so much, Chelsea. Thank you. Bye.